Hi, I'm Jan Marie, and this is Wise Talk. I'm so happy to have today's guest with us today. Not only is she a personal friend, she is an outstanding photographer. Hazel Meredith, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me back. I'm so excited. You were so good the first time, I'm just saying. But I'm having you back for a second reason, because you are the author of an e-book, which is really, mm -hmm. really exciting, Thank and you. a CD. And we're going to be talking more about that. But what's really helpful is you talk about something all photographers, of which I might add I'm one of them, sure. that need to know which are textures. Mm -hmm. So can you just tell us what textures do for a photograph, please? Well, I call it taking ho-hum to a work of art. Um, textures can help accent your photos, turn them into something a little bit fancier, um, just add another dimension of depth and color and, and just pattern and give it some feel. Now before the show started, we were talking about you judged at another camera club mm -hmm. and you commented that, that you noticed if the pictures were tweaked just a little bit, mm -hmm. what would have happened? What was, and what did you notice? Yeah, some of the things were just very minor tweaks, like uh, background was a little too bright, or they could have cropped down some of the blank sky or foreground that was kind of empty, so that your eye stays focused on your subject. Oh, that's an important point. Now, also, there was someone else in the studio who happens to be an accomplished photographer, and he mm -hmm. was telling me that he is so surprised in this digital age, and anybody would submit a bald sky, a sky right. without any blue in it. Why would he say that to me? Because it's so easy to change that now in Photoshop and all of the other editing programs by either changing the sky completely, using a textured, like an overlay of another sky on top of it, mm -hmm. and you can blend it in so it looks like it had some pretty clouds that day. Right. They have uh, programs out that are, ex for the real beginner, very basic, that yes. can do things like that. Absolutely. Not for you. You're the pro. You use Photoshop. But uh, and but there is Photoshop elements, right. too. And, yeah, that's what I used for years until a couple of years ago when I kind of went to the full-blown Photoshop. But yes. Elements does most of what most photographers need. And I also noticed on, on phones, they have a lot of corrective yes. devices. So they really, the, the days of film, which I regretted and mourned the loss of my Kodachrome, but, and Velvia, but those days where everything was so painstaking to mm -hmm. try to color anything are just gone and, and the way to go obviously is digital. Mm -hmm. Can you, I notice, I know in your book on page seven mm -hmm. that you can show us how, but first of all, that's a beautiful image that Thank you. On the monitor, I know it'll come up in the monitor in a second, but can this is a gorgeous image. Can you tell us a little bit about this image? Sure. Um, this is actually a composite of several images. The the birds in the the tree branches were shot in Florida in the middle of the day in mm -hmm. bright sunlight. How did you do that? How could? Because I'm telling you, that doesn't look like a sunlight photograph. Well, it. That's because it was combined with some textures and the moon to turn it into something different. Oh. The moon was shot here in Stratford where I live a few years ago and we had a super moon and then I used textures to create the sky. That's I think two or three textures layered in there. Oh, okay. As well. um, now interestingly, so that was, it's like a combination of different places where that was taken, mm -hmm. and it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, over on page seven, mm -hmm. you have some other photographs. I do. Um, and I, the, um, con the director will show us a little bit, go to the monitor and show us how this works. Um, this is an example of a very simple texture. Um, I had taken this orange flower, the one in the upper left, um, with the bee. It had just rained when we were at a garden. And I always felt the flower wasn't completely sharp mm -hmm. to put it in a competition. But by layering a texture over it and blending it in, it turns it into something different. And you can't tell that it's not perfectly sharp anymore. And I have to tell you the impact of the second image, the one on the bottom of the screen. It's, it's gone from, to steal your words, ho-hum, to wow. Yep. 
Yep, wow, that's why I really very, very um, nice. I that, love textures for that. Yes, mm. and you, so it saves a lot of pictures because I I know that if I shoot in program, then my aperture or my depth of field can hurt, and mm -hmm. sometimes I forget to put it on a manual. Mm -hmm. So the thousands of pictures I've shot, I might still have a, have might have a second life. Absolutely. Oh, that's good to know. Now. Um, how do you photograph, or how did you photograph textures? Can you photograph textures? Absolutely. Um, textures are, I'll show you a few examples. Textures are everywhere. Textures can be leaves, like the, the palm frond there. They can be, um, peeling paint is great for textures, whether it's, this one happens to be on the bottom of a boat. So these are all your own personal yes, photographs? these are all ones that I, I photographed. Okay. I love using rusty things as uh -huh. textures. They just really bring out the depth in images, and, and you can get that kind of grunge look mm -hmm. on your image. Um, cracked blacktop, moss on a log, anything. Anything could be textures. Rugs. Wallpaper, anything. anything. Well, I have to tell you, I've taken a few of your workshops, and um, and what happens after one of your workshops, my, uh, my, it's it's enhanced when I look at something and I don't discard it because I think, oh, mm -hmm. texture. Not that I've gone to the next step. Don't get excited. <laughs> You'll get there. I will. Thank you. That's very <laughs> encouraging. But I have a wonderful array of textures, mm -hmm. and this I brick love wall is a great texture. Brick wall. Let me get my camera out. Don't. You shoot one, so so that so they're out there everywhere. Yes. And I also remember mm -hmm. when I took one of your workshops because I've taken more than one mm -hmm. that you had, uh, and I love to do this. I like to make cards, mm -hmm. and they have wonderful papers out there. Yes. And those papers you can photograph and use those as textures. Absolutely, some of the scrapbook papers um, yes, go that's to the, word. the um, craft stores and. Find some that you like. Some I like using some of the word overlay ones and putting oh, yes, those over yes. flower images. I did one that made a really nice card that I had some printed of. Um, so they, there's just everything. I mean, you can take a, a photograph of green grass and that becomes a texture. Yes, and yeah. I know um, sometimes people like to paint backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You know, in the, in the olden days where you had to paint a background to put behind a flower mm -hmm. to obscure the background, mm -hmm. those shouldn't be discarded because mm -hmm. those backgrounds can be wonderful texture. Absolutely. So there's th things that were old can be reused. Very, very, very interesting. One of my upcoming projects is going to be to create some textures with paint and then oh, photograph really? them to, yes. That, oh, that's what a great my, idea. That's on list. your to-do list. It's on my to-do list. Now, <laughs> I, I'm going to mention you work full-time. Yes. You have a husband who's extremely demanding. <laughs> you travel a lot because you give um, field trips and workshops. Mm -hmm. When are you going to fit that in? Um, we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, because I'm just thinking, you know, that husbands can be so... Oh, yes. So you know? demanding. So, you just so. I'm but just also saying. very supportive. Oh, now that's sweet. If he's listening to this at some point, I hope he he's extra nice to you because of that. I'm just going to tell the audience he's in the control room, so she wants a ride home tonight. I'm just saying. Oh, I have the keys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Now, there's also, besides getting taking your own textures, mm -hmm. because some people are pressed for time, mm -hmm. there's commercial textures out there. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Sure. They're, um, let's find So two. you're going to, okay, you're okay. going to go. So okay. here's a couple here. Um, these three that I used on this project are from a company called Two Little Owls. Um, her name is Denise Love. She's in Georgia. Where did she get that name, Two Little Owls? I'm not sure. I, I have to research that. Okay, I'm um, thinking, yeah. you know, all right. Um, but she does fabulous textures. These are three of, I have more than a thousand of her textures. They're oh just my, like, a thousand? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and what I'm noticing about awesome. the textures, mm -hmm. the one in the middle that you have on the screen, mm -hmm. is there's a lot of light areas and it's all around it mm -hmm. that is dark and brown. What kind of picture could that be used for? Um, well, I like the ones that have kind of that natural vignette where the edges are a little darker and it just, it again, it centers your eye on your subject. They can, it can be used on any photo, and a lot of working with textures is trial and error. Um, the more you do it, the more you kind of get a feel of what might work with a picture, but a lot of times, I mean, to come up with those three on this image, I may have tried a dozen or more. 
of okay. just you know trial and error. Now, I, I, how do you know? Uh, so it's. I was going to ask you how do you know it textured works, but you just say trial yeah, and you error. Yeah, it's trial and error. But the more you do it, the more you kind of get a feel for the look you might be going for. You know, when I look at an image and I go, okay, the barn is really nice, but what can I do to jazz that up a little bit and just give it some more punch or turn it into that work of art. Um, and then I'll start playing around with some different textures and see now, what I like. let me ask you this. So you take, a, you take your own picture of, of X, let's just say paint chips, mm -hmm. and are you, are you have to photo, do you have to use it as is, or can you increase or decrease the, uh, I'm trying to, the, uh, the. There's lots of things you can do with it, can actually. You, I, I'm thinking um, the word, um, the brightness you can adjust. You can adjust the colors in Photoshop. I can take something that was, um, I don't know, like peeling paint. It, maybe it was a, a white wall of peeling paint, but I want something that's more brownish. You can, in Photoshop, do a hue and saturation adjustment and change oh, that. Yes. Um, Op opacity, opacity. Opacity, that you control once you bring the texture over the Explain image. Explain what that is. I was searching for that word. Opacity Explain. is when we're working in Photoshop and we have multiple layers. We can Textures work with the image below it by changing two things, the blending modes and the opacity. Okay. So the opacity makes it a little more transparent so that you see your picture show through. That's what I was looking for. But the, if someone hasn't done this at all, what they really should look for are pictures, are um, things in nature, or or just around their own anything. house. Anything. Anything. Shoot that, and then start getting mm -hmm. into it. That makes a, that's a very good point. And there's a lot of free stuff available oh, online free. too. Oh, free! Free is a good thing. Yeah, free. <laughs> where, where do we get free there, stuff? There's lots of. Um, oh, excuse me, free. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of great companies that I, I bought textures from, but there are a lot of places. On, if you just Google it, you will find thousands of sites that you can download free textures. Oh, that's interesting. And brushes and everything. What do you mean by brushes? Um, you can actually create a texture with a brush as well. Um, and it, that gives you a, sometimes a more subtle look than bringing an actual photo over it. Um, in Photoshop, we can create a separate layer and put the brush on there, and then again change the blending modes Let and the opacity. Let me take some notes on this. <laughs> it's all in the it's book. It's all in the book. Okay. <laughs> now I have to tell you, and I shouldn't, I shouldn't tell, say this. I really shouldn't. But you gave me a copy of this, mm -hmm. and I'm very, very, very grateful. However, you haven't looked at it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm grateful. I am so grateful, and I meant to do it for this show. But I got busy with some other. But I'm extremely I'm grateful. Like, Thank you, you so will much. Get there. You I will. will get there. But the the other thing is that occurs to me is that you could basically spend your nights and days in front of oh, the yes. computer oh, yeah. and just do all you never have to go outside and take another picture true everything you have is probably because i really do have thousands of pictures yeah we have three hundred thousand on our so oh is that right between dave and i yes there, wow. we have lots of pictures <laughs> you got me in trouble i don't know if you know this but i downloaded um the entire suite of topaz filters mm -hmm. because i wanted to i was ready hazel this is just before and I decided to give myself a Christmas present. There you go. And that was all the Topaz filters. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't used one, and it's been several months. But in order for me to download them, mm -hmm. my old computer wouldn't take them. Uh. I had to buy a new computer. <laughs> Uh -oh. So this has cost <laughs> has cost me several a, a lot of money, and it's all I'm, I'm hoping Sorry. you're personally responsible for oh, all okay. this, as long as you know. So now, um, topaz textures. What are topaz textures? Um, well, topaz is a whole suite of different products, but their newest one is Topaz Texture Effects, where um, it does come with some textures already installed in it, um, and it comes with kind of what they call recipes mm -hmm. or presets that you can try on your image that are a combination of textures, um, maybe a, an overlay of color, some brushes. It, it, they kind of apply it all in one shot. Mm -hmm. And then you can mm -hmm. fine tune it to your liking. So you can add or, or take away from those things. So it's a quicker way of doing some textures than doing it just in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, and you can also add your own textures to that program. Oh, that's, so that's you, good So to anything know. you photographed, you can import into there and use that program to apply them to your images. Now, you mentioned in your book that you also have uh, bundles by design cuts, uh, inky mm -hmm. deals, creative market, brush easy. 
Yes. Now, apparently there are, and I'm sure more and more are coming up. Yes. Now, is there really a distinction between these, or? Um, well, what what the first few companies you mentioned, Design Cuts, Inky Deals, and um, the Creative Market does some, but mostly those first two, they create these bundles of products. And that's how I got so many Too Little Else textures, because she does a lot of work with Design Cuts. They create packages of various people's not only textures, but fonts, brushes, um, things if you do like package design and things you can use in other aspects of like graphics. Mm -hmm. And these things would be worth thousands of dollars and they sell them for $29. Wow. Yeah, they're really amazing. And they just started another division on their website. Um, they're calling it a, their own version of a market where you can kind of custom create your own bundle as well. Wow. Which which one of those? I'm going to highlight. That's Design Cuts. Design Cuts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let the audience know I'm highlighting that because when I go home, I want to look it up. Yeah. And $29. The thing is with their bundles, they're only published for usually about three weeks at a time so you have to it's a good idea to sign up for their email so that you know when a new bundle comes out oh, isn't because that it's, it is a limited time frame they also supply some free things on occasion um, you know to their subscribers and you can find them on Facebook they have their own website they're based in the UK great bunch of people I've actually talked to the owner of it he was doing surveys of some customers last year and at six o'clock in the morning because it was, you know, middle of the day over there before I went to work. I had a conversation with him on the phone and it was I really cool. I don't talk cold. to many people at six in the morning, <laughs> but then again, I live alone. So let me, let me just ask you this. Um, where would be for the beginning photographer who wants to get involved, has mm -hmm. very little knowledge of Photoshop, it's probably going to use Photoshop elements. Mm -hmm. What, what would be a good starting program to buy? Are you, I have several listed here. What would be a good start? <clears throat> um, I would just download some of the free stuff to get started. Oh, that's a good point. Um, and start with that. And then as you you develop your own style and what you like, because mm -hmm. um, some textures, some companies tend to be more the grungy kind of look and, and darker textures. Mm -hmm. And I have one um, by a company called French Kiss Textures, and they're very pastel y mm -hmm. and very light and I do airy. That, yes. um, so they, you know, you can then fine tune what you like and then purchase things that go oh, that's with, a good with point. a style that you like. Now, on page 11 in your book, you talk mm -hmm. about uh, Photoshop, how you can create your own textures in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that work? Um, well, it's a multi-step process. Um, this is just to give you a, a starting point here. We, we actually start with a new blank file in Photoshop, and the book walks you through all of these steps. And then by using brushes that are already in the program, so you don't have to go out and buy anything else, you can create your own textures by layering colors and br different brush styles. So this goes through, um, you know, first... Wow! Yeah. I really have to read this. You do. Uh, wow, I can't believe I didn't know that. Wow. Um, you create your background color. So here I worked with the colors in the blue family. Did you created that in Photoshop. Yes. Oh, I love that. You know, and that looks like, it looks like raindrops. Mm-hmm. You, did you, you must have known that. I was just kind of playing. And, wow. And so this was... Um, this first one here is our background color. And then on this layer three is this first layer of brushes. I chose a different color of blue. And then we changed color, we added another blank layer and then chose a slightly different brush and a little darker color and just kind of clicked around with that. Mm -hmm. And then did a third layer and then that became my texture. But you could add a fourth or a fifth layer if you wanted to, you could, you know, do as much as you want or as little as you want. And then you would drag it over an image and then stretch it out. So I took this image that had a very, you know, had clouds but a plain sky and kind of blended it in, made it something a little different. And then you can also modify the textures by applying a blur filter in Photoshop or some of the other built-in filters and create something totally different. I've also started using some of the other Topaz products to do that. Another reason for you to use your Topaz. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, feeling, I, I'm feeling like I really do need to sit down and do this. Your apps, Because I look yep. at your work and I think, oh, 
my God. And I have all the materials. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, I need... Um, Put it I, in your appointment book. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, maybe there's someone. I know I know somebody who's very good in photography. Maybe he'll, he'll, he'll meet with me at, at Starbucks and we can mm -hmm. have, like... Um, texture workshops, but I can yell and scream, who knows? <laughs> and, you know, and he'll say, come to my rescue. But these are really wonderful. Thanks. Now, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. um, I also have to tell you, I like the word free. I do have a question. What about usage rights of the thing, these Good question. Um, the one thing I do like about companies like Design Cuts, when you buy their bundles, they come with a license for full usage. So if you're using it in a product that you want to make cards and sell or sell the prints of, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, some textures, especially some of the free ones, you have to read the usage rights because there are some that are for personal use only. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to use them in a commercial work that you're going to make money from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is important to check that. That before you point. use it on a, a project that you're going to make money with. With, with any luck. <laughs> with any luck. <laughs> I mean, I, I always want to you know, grow up, become rich, and you know, live by millions. So, so with any luck, okay. Now, um, I was just wondering if you could demo. Oh, you just demoed. Did you have any other demos mm, in Photoshop? I, I can. Um, let's close this book out. So mm -hmm. I just find it amazing that just going through this, that your CD, I'm just looking at the table of contents here, mm -hmm. and there is just a lot of information. It Thank sounds you. like this will get started. So it's a book, and it, it comes on the CD. Yes. Okay, um, good. It, on the CD is um, a PDF of the book itself, which is what we've been showing. And then there are folders with projects so that you can follow along with the images and the textures. So you can do the projects that I show in the book. Oh, what a good idea! And there's also some, and those are all free textures from Two Little Owls and flypaper textures, and a set that I created, a set of brushes I created, and then once you buy it, if you email me, I send you some more free textures and brushes. Wow, I'm going to have to start opening this so. up. Don't don't tell anybody I haven't used okay. it. I've only had it 500 years. Okay. But you know, so you're going to show some other yes, examples. Yes, let me see if I can I'm, get out of Really, um, I'm so excited. We're this doing product? this because it's getting me excited, and maybe there's hope for me. Who there knows? Go. All right. So All right. So we're going to go, to go back to this. We're going to go to Photoshop. Okay. Great image. So this is one I took at. Um, it's a place called Old Car City in Georgia. It in is Georgia. In Georgia, it's 400 plus acres of old junk cars. 400 acres. Mm -hmm. This guy's been doing this for a very long time. He's about 80-something uh, years old, the owner. He's is he married? There. Yes, he is. <laughs> yeah, he's just <laughs> he is. Oh, I was just looking. Um, I'm always actually looking. Actually, that is his wife. She's a very sweet lady. So what I did with this one um, was I'm going to bring three textures over this okay. image. So I've gone ahead and I've opened them all in Photoshop, and they're up here on these little tabs. So I'm just going to, by using my Move tool, I'm going to grab a texture. Separated oh, out. Oh, I love that. I like that would be nice as a painting on the wall. Absolutely. And a lot of textures are like that. I don't know if you'd like to show the sample I have that makes a great abstract kind of a, yeah, so a let painting. Me, uh, let me I grab have the one sample. Here that you might want to. Okay, and I'll hold this up. Now, uh, she told me earlier in the. Um, I was just going to hold this up, Doug, and if you could come back to me on the camera, I'd appreciate it. But this is a texture that you have that you could. You could use on the wall. Yeah. I don't think Doug wants to come back. There we are. <laughs> I'm just, here we go. Here we are. So this is a, this is a wonderful texture mm -hmm. that and it is abstract. And I'm thinking I can make a quilt out of this. That's that would wonderful. be a beautiful quilt. So be going quilt. back to the um, going back to the uh, mm -hmm. computer. So I've brought this texture over now to get it on top of the picture because right now they're two separate files. I'm just going to click on it, hold my mouse down, and drag it over on top of my photo. I'm going to say OK here. I'll get rid of that because we don't need it. And now I'm just going to size it to cover this image. If I can see my handles here. There we go. So we want it to cover the image totally. And now this is where the magic comes in by changing the blending modes and the opacity. And on this particular one, and the blending modes we change over here above our layers palette mm -hmm. where it says normal. There's a whole bunch of different things we can do in here. I'm going to use overlay. 
and I'm going to bring the opacity of that layer down to about 40 percent. So I've added some texture and you can see here's the the before and the after and it just kind of warmed up that image a little bit. Oh now go back to it. Because what the before I liked the before. Mm -hmm. I mean I, I would not say anything yep. but I but go back to now to the my, next one. My goal was to kind of it hide this car in the background and, and get rid of some of that distraction. So then I decided well that wasn't quite enough so let's bring in another texture. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to drag that over there. We're going to size it. Cover our image. Say OK. And this one I'm going to use one of the modes that darkens it a little. And I'm going to go to multiply. And then bring down my opacity just a little bit to about 80% or so, somewhere around there. Oh, so now does. we're really starting to cover that yes. car and, and some yes. of the background, because I really want the, the viewer's eye to be on the main subject. Now you're bringing up something, this is all subjective. Absolutely. So what you like, maybe someone liked the other one mm -hmm. better, or maybe they didn't want to touch it at all. Exactly. And that's where the artist comes Absolutely. in. Absolutely. And that's where the hours of time come in. Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> because to come up with these three, I probably spent, you know, half hour, 45 minutes playing around with some different textures to find the ones that I thought work the best. Yeah, I, I know we're running out of time. If my no producer problem. could give me a time check, I'd appreciate it. But um, so what I'm going to do is, Hazel, if someone mm -hmm. wanted to get in uh, touch with you, mm -hmm. how, would they, how would they do it? Um, my website is MeredithImages.com. And my email is hazel at meredithimages.com. So oh, that's either easy. way. Yeah. That, that, I have to tell you, your website is, is phenomenal. I Thank was you. just on it. And I understood you created it yourself. I did. I'm impressed. Did that take you a long time? Yes, it did. That's, this is like the third version. I keep every few years refreshing it and changing it. And because oh, yeah, I, I, more things happen. I, yeah, I, I noticed that, and mm -hmm. but I also, but I also noticed that um, I noticed I really liked it. Thank you. But if you if you don't remember the name uh, Hazel Meredith, you can always contact me. Um, my name mm -hmm. is Jan Doyle. You can contact me at jmdteach at comcast.net, or you can contact me here at the station at BCTV, and they'll put you in touch with me, and I can put you in touch with Hazel. Absolutely. This was. Is there any last word you'd like to say before we we um, head out? I always just tell people when you're working with textures, just have fun, just play and make it your own. That's that's what makes it so much fun to do. It, oh. it becomes your own, you know, piece of art. That's a good idea. That's a wonderful idea. Hazel, thank you so much You're for welcome. coming. You're welcome. Thank you. I hope you come back again. I'm I used to. you having another book. I am. I'm already working on book two. Do you want to tell me what the title is or not? Uh, I'm not sure yet, okay. actually. It's, it's going to be a continuation. No, it's still going to be on textures, but there are so many different ways that you can apply textures and work with them and create them that I couldn't get them all in one book. You wouldn't want to consider the title Everything Jan Doyle Taught Me About Textures? No, okay. You can think about that. All right, fine. I love it when you lie. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Jan. You. I appreciate your having me again. So, so this is a very interesting article.